April update of the New Haven 1959. I have done a few little projects, so I'm gonna just show you around and get you up to speed on what's been going on lately. So one of the bigger undertakings that I've been going through lately has been trying to get op sessions on the computer and using various programs. I've used a few Excel spreadsheets that I found online as well as switch list. And recently I've been working with the JMRI. And I think I like that one the best, uh, the JMRI. I just started actually working on that today. Um, so I've, I've got things set up here. But before I get to that, I have wanted to do some signage so that I can name these industries so that way they all work in the computer for operations. So this sign was um, scratch built and I didn't have much to go on. I kind of guessed at the structure. I went on a billboard kit that I have and some online images, but I'm pretty psyched the way this came out. I think it looks pretty decent and pretty realistic for the setting. And um, so now the structure's named Bookman Brothers. It's a Twilight Zone reference, the Bookman character. Um, Bookman, I believe, was the pitch salesman. I forget, I keep getting my references all mixed up, but I think it was Bookman. Um, I'll have to double check, but I think it was the, the Pitchman episode um, with uh, Mr. Death. He was the the actor who played Mr. Death in that episode was the um, mayor of Amity in Jaws, if I'm thinking of the correct episode. I've got the, um, this structure has been named the R. Wordsworth Publishing for Romney Wordsworth from the obsolete episode of the Twilight Zone. And then this, of course, is Serling Storage um, for Rod Serling. And I have also done a transfer, a photo transfer. I did a lot of research on photo transfers. And this one, actually, I'm pretty psyched the way it came out although it did not yield half as decent results as I thought it was going to. But I think it looks pretty realistically weathered on the on the brick and pretty painted. I think the left side of the sign next to the F has some work to do. But facsimile is another Twilight Zone reference. I believe it's from the trade-ins maybe. I could have that title mixed up, but I think it's where the old couple goes to replace their bodies for newer bodies and they only can afford one and they have to make the decision as to which one of them gets the procedure. Um, I had gotten with, I think, oh, I forget the company, but I've, I got these road crossings and I got some billboards with them. This is an N scale billboard, billboard but I, I, it, I think it works pretty well on the building. So I did the typical, um, sand the back of it, glue it on method. I need to weather it a little bit more, but that was what I did for that sign. Um, oh, I also did the office, which is from one of my Walther's background kits. And that is just a decal, a um, wet release decal. And I'm thinking what other signs I did. I did the Banco's sign here. A lot of these were featured on my um, Instagram page. So the Bancos, Bancos is a, uh, or was um, a Connecticut classic uh, music store for decades in the Valley uh, where I grew up. So uh, my sister used to get her clarinets from, in school from Bancos. And so Bancos is a very, um, typical uh, staple of the Connecticut Valley uh, where I grew up. So that's Banco's. And I need to put some signage on this structure. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. Um, I don't know if it's gonna actually have like a location for operations, but um, I need to come have some kind of signage on this structure as well. And I think that's it for signage. I'm trying to think what else. Um, I need some signage for this structure. I had maybe alluded to the fact that I was going to get this structure. Um, it's a DPM 
and I've been slowly but surely making more and more progress on it. I just glued it down uh, this morning to the the base, so um, it's uh, I can get inside to to modify it. And I had made the structure or the ground around it rather, you know, kind of hopefully blend in as seamlessly as I can, so I can remove the structure and it fits back into that space pretty pretty nicely. Um, it looks pretty seamless around. So I've been working on this little scene. I did some of the gravel um, parking area on the side of the, the building there. Um, so this little area, this little scene I've been working on and the signage, trying to get an op session um, or op software that I like. Um, and like I said, I think the JMRI so far has yielded the best results. Um, there's a few more little things that I wanna show you. So I'll be right back. So this is the river. I forget if I had updated on the last um, episode whether I had gone over this, but everything is pretty much in place for the riverbed. I think I need to spray the center of it darker though, because once I put in the water effects, I don't think it's going to be dark enough. Um, so that needs a little bit more work. And there's one more thing I need to, uh, to do before I can put the water in, which is probably more foliage on the riverbank. So um, stay tuned and look forward to that in the future episodes and um that's it for the the riverbed for now and the last little project i have worked on is getting in the ballast for the rest of this section um i'm not sure why that section is darker there which is kind of kind of weird um i'm not really sure but i ballasted the rest of this industry siding um yesterday and it's pretty much dry now. Um, probably need some touch-up work in a few little spots, but both, um, both sidings are now ballasted and they're pretty good. The next thing is gonna be is to fill in some of the gap for the under the table snap switch um, throws that I have. I made the holes extremely large just to be safe and now I need to go back fill them a little bit because they're a little obnoxiously large so I have to work on that but that's kind of you know for a rainy day kind of project it's not very fun so um, that will be on the back burner for now and I also ballasted the rest of this section here. Um, if you remember from previous episodes, this section had to be replaced. I had um, a few engines kept derailing on this section. So I needed to tear it up and I finally got around to ballasting it. I had done enough operations and, and running of things around that uh, the track was pretty good. So I didn't need to make any adjustments. If it derails at this point, I will have to tear it up again, but I think everything should be good. So. That's pretty much it on the updates. Can't think of anything else. Again, I've been playing around a lot with different software for op sessions. And um, the switch list is nice, but I only have that available on my computer upstairs. And um, I could not get switch list for my laptop that I have downstairs here. So I walk around the back of the layout. So my goal is to have this laptop as my designated train computer, which will run Decoder Pro eventually, and um, possibly it looks like the JMRI Operations Pro software. Again, I've tried the few Excel spreadsheet um, switch list programs and the actual switch list program. I can't get the switch list on this computer, although I got it to work halfway decently upstairs on my other computer, but it would be nice if everything is just down here. Um, 
And again, I always put the cart before the horse, but I'm trying to get things set up for a much more functional layout once I have uh, these two tracks coming around and bridging across onto this section here. I spent about another hour last night trying to come up with some kind of design for this table, um, this new section, which is kind of my summer project and looking at about five to seven more industries on here, which will basically make this a much more obvious point to point layout and much more functional and much more interesting for ops and, and that kind of thing. So this will be the Waterbury yard and I'm looking at right now, this would be, this section here would be split into two Eastern destinations. I think Greenbush and Medfield, if I have those sections correct, they're based on the prototype, but um, of the New Haven line to Boston. But, you know, again, it's, it's loose and um, interpretive. But if I can have those two separate destinations, then I'd have three total destinations and a bunch more industries or locations, um, which will help make things a lot more interesting on the, the layout. So that's kind of the future. And this is, you know, what I've been up to lately. So thanks for sticking around for this April update. And um, hopefully we'll see you in May. Thanks again. Take care.